the story of Nestle begins with the birth of a boy in Frankfurt in 1814. Henry Nestle was the 11th of 14 children and was born into a family of glaziers, where the trade of cutting and fitting glass had been passed down from father to son for many generations. However, as Henry got older, he became fascinated with chemistry and decided he wanted to become a pharmacist instead of going into the family trade, which caused a bit of a rift between him and his dad. But Henry was determined to follow his own path, and at 15, he began working as a pharmacist apprentice before later leaving his hometown in Germany to go and live in Switzerland, where he worked on concocting medicines and chemical experiments. It was here in Switzerland that Henry would start one of the biggest corporations in the world. In fact, to this day, Vevey in Switzerland remains the headquarters of Nestle. But it wasn't until much later in his life that Henry started Nestle. Before his big break, Henry tried all kinds of different entrepreneurial ideas. Like he started producing and selling liqueurs, vinegars, rum, lemonade, and even fertilizers. But none of his business ideas ever seemed to take off. It wasn't until Henry was in his 50s that he finally had his big breakthrough. It all began when Henry read a report that infant mortality had become extremely high because many women couldn't breastfeed their children or their children were allergic to the milk. Henry realized this massive problem was also a big opportunity. There was clearly a major need for an artificial alternative to breastfeeding that could save countless babies' lives. And thus, Henry began to study all the existing information about breast milk and conduct a series of experiments in his lab with various different ingredients. But saving children's lives wasn't the only thing that pushed Henry day and night to find a breast milk substitute. His own tragedy also played a part, as Henry's wife had had many health issues of her own and thus was unable to give birth. So as a way to channel her maternal instincts, she became extremely concerned about other people's babies and pushed Henry to create a breast milk substitute that could save lives. And by 1867, he'd succeeded. Henry had created one of the first ever baby formulas, essentially a formulated mixture of cow's milk, flour, and sugar, which could be a substitute to natural breast milk. Henry then created a company called Nestle to begin selling it. And so you see, Nestle began with such great intentions, a humble guy creating a life-saving product for babies who couldn't breastfeed naturally. Unfortunately, this isn't a heartwarming success story. If anything, this is a horror movie. You see, whilst baby food was the product that started Nestle's dominance, it was also the product that would later destroy lives and create an international scandal. And as Nestle grew into a giant conglomerate, they became shrouded in all kinds of dark controversies. But we'll get to that. At first, Henry's new baby formula was a big success. Orders were coming in so quickly that Henry had to open up a factory to keep up with the demand. He couldn't believe it. Everything was happening so fast and money was pouring in. With the huge success of this first product, Henry then partnered with a Swiss chocolatier to create another new product. And in 1875, they created the first chocolate milk. In the space of just a couple of years, Henry went from being a small, unknown pharmacist in Switzerland to one of the richest men in the country. And Nestle was growing more and more every month. But, in a way, it was all a bit too much for Henry, who was entering the final stages of his life and wanted to relax and spend more time with his wife. And so, a few years later, Henry decided to retire and sell his company. And this is where things get really interesting. You see, the new owners who took over Nestle had big plans to expand the company. And in 1905, they merged with a rival business who sold similar products called Anglo-Swiss. And together, they became known as the Nestle Group. By pooling all their resources together instead of competing, it allowed them to more easily dominate the market and expand their product lines. By the 1920s, Nestle was creating new chocolates and different beverages. And by 1938, they'd created the first mass market coffee. Their timing was great, as instant coffee helped keep soldiers awake during the Second World War, and thus it became included in all emergency rations of every US soldier. As well as creating new products, the Nestle Group quite often just acquired other companies they saw potential in, or that they thought could be serious competition. And so, as the years went by, Nestle's list of products grew and grew, and so did their wealth and power. Unfortunately, that wasn't enough for them. And behind the scenes, a plan was being hatched. A plan that would make millions of dollars, but risk millions of lives. 